Hi, welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. And here we see the engine that came in the other day for a company in Green Bay, Wisconsin, for me to overhaul. And I am at the point in the disassembly where I need to remove the cylinder heads, which can be a problem sometimes. However, this time, this is as bad as I've seen. Dang it. Now the problem here is this, if we look down here, we can see that we've got studs coming up through the cylinder head and then there's nuts that attach the cylinder head to the top of the block. Now at this end and at this end, the two studs in these positions run through aluminum part of the head. The rest of these though, because the block has an open deck or a wet deck, water actually comes up between the cylinder head and the stud. And if you don't observe the service recommendations that Jaguar stipulates for coolant, like I believe it's every 25,000 miles, it can get real acidic and, and it can corrode the cylinder head onto those studs. And therein lies the problem. So, the normal way that these heads come off is you got a couple pullers, one here and one here, and you just sort of go back and forth making sure that the cylinder head is coming off evenly because you get this thing misaligned, it can jam it on really tight. So you need to really make sure that as this comes up, the gap between the cylinder head and the block is even all the way around. Okay? Now, Initially, I, I did that, and I had, as I said, two pullers on here, and I got it up about a sixteenth of an inch. And it, I actually had to replace one of these bolts because it was getting so tight. So what I did is then put the nuts back on the studs, tightened it back down again. The theory being that once you got it up any amount, an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, what you've done is you sheared that corrosion in between the bolt and the cylinder head. So what I did then, because it was clear that just two wasn't going to work, I put another set of pullers on it. And by working the cylinder head back and forth, I was able to get a quarter of an inch gap. Now an additional thing that I did, if you look down below here, around each one of these studs, you can see a 20 ounce soda bottle cap that I cut a hole in the top and then I took a little RTV silicone, ran it around the edge and fit it over the top of each one of these studs. And the hole in the cap is bigger than the diameter of the stud. I then took the magic mysterious 50% ATF, 50% acetone mixture, which is from my experience, the best penetrating oil ever. Shake that up pretty good because it wants to separate. And then fill these caps after the caps have sat for two or three hours for the silicone to, uh, to set. Fill them up with fluid and then let them sit overnight. You don't have to do the end ones because if we look carefully here, we can see that the end ones, they move. Any, st any stud that moves, that wiggles around, isn't your problem. All of these in between the ends are a problem. So I filled that up and you can look also here that the, uh, the studs on the inside are in pockets. I then just took this and filled that up and I also let that sit overnight. Now you can see that, now I filled these up when I got out here this morning and that was about four hours ago. So this fluid as you can see, is starting to drain down. And uh, that's a good thing. Now the thing is, as you work this head up and down, there's a danger zone. And if we go back to this stud right here, when you get the cylinder head up to the point where you can no longer get the nut on there, you're committed. You gotta keep pulling. And just because you got it to this point doesn't mean that it's going to get any better because that corrosion tends to, the more you pull it up, 
the more it jams in between the stud and the cylinder head, the hole in the cylinder head. Now the situation as it stands is that the back half of the cylinder head is pretty loose. You can see that the fluid is drained down, uh, they're almost dry. Uh, and so this is going to come up pretty easily, but the front is still really, really tight. So what I've done is I've concocted this arrangement right here. What this is, is a piece of angle mounted on a plate. The plate's there for stability to keep this thing from rotating against the, uh, the water pump flange here. Uh, this plate is attached to bolts in the water pump flange. And then the top three here hold, the, um, hold this piece of angle steel onto the front of the block. And up here, of course, we've got the reverse. And we've got a piece of threaded rod, half inch threaded rod that goes through here. Uh, on each side. And so this is not going to be the primary means of forcing this up. This is just going to be another set of pullers because we're just looking at two bolts up here that there's going to be a lot of torque on. And then the same thing down here. We don't want to, we don't want to damage it. Oh, one more thing we need to do here. We need to actually put nuts and bushings on here so that we stabilize the front of the um, cam box because this is going to be pulling on the cam box and this whole front end is going to be coming up here. So we got to get that taken care of before we do anything else. I'm going to demonstrate now the sequence that I use in order to tighten these tab bolts and in this case threaded rod in order to extract the head. There's a few things that I need to point out again, and that is you have to always be checking the gap in between the cylinder head and the block to make absolutely certain that it's coming off straight. If you don't, it's going to get jammed on there, and I had a Facebook friend have to use a forklift to get his cylinder heads off. The other option, of course, is to take a sawzall and cut all the studs and replace them all. It's best to be careful. So. Another thing is, these things, if they start to stall, like they don't want to move, what you're in danger of is you're actually in danger of breaking these studs off that, the, that hold the caps on the cam box here that the camshaft spins in. So you don't want to break these off because they break off below the surface and they were tight to begin with. So now you got to somehow extract that thing, and that is not fun. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. So what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, I'm going to start out the ends, one, two, three, four, and then go to the middle, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm going to give a little bit of a twist on the, on the threaded rod up here. Now, as I said, the danger zone is when we can no longer get a thread on here on these studs and pull it back down again. At this point, we've pretty much committed ourselves that we're going to try to get this thing off. And I'm feeling good. So let's go here. So and I go about maybe a quarter of a turn. Well, there it is. We got it off, and it was kind of a struggle. 
uh, it stayed pretty tight all the way up to the end. Usually what happens is you, as you get the head off further and further and there's less stud and corrosion on the inside of the cylinder head, uh, it tends to get easier, but this stayed really kind of tough on this end, on the front end, right up to the very end. And I think that there's two things that made it a lot easier than it could have been. First of all, these little pop bottle caps, 20 ounce pop bottle caps with the holes in them that I stuck on the, around the, the studs and filled them full of the penetrating oil. You can see that this is all wet on the studs right here. So that really, in my, in my view, helped us out. Also, this thing, this puller that I arranged on the front, because it was so tight up front here, that I think made the difference between a, uh, a successful extraction and uh, something less pleasant. So there you have it. Now, if you like these videos, you want to see more of them, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and put a few comments down below so that we can know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.